Karate. Um, you asked me to give you a rundown of the differences between um, commercial use of century and government use of century. And uh, it's a bit easier for me to just put it up on the board so you can see my back. In commercial enterprises, what we normally do is we have a budget. And we sign that budget. It could be a budget for the year, it could be a budget for a bunch of months. So we'll say that the budget's um, you know, $10 million for a particular activity. In commercial accounting, it's not until you actually get the invoice, the invoice comes in, that we actually reduce our budget. So if we spend uh, for instance, $11 million. We've committed $11 million in a purchase order. We're not going to know about that until we actually get the invoice in. So if people are out there in a situation sending out, sending out purchase orders, we're not going to be able to track that. That's the fundamental difference between commercial and uh, government accounting. Because what happens in government accounting is that you will have a department I'm going to just to read this is a little bit messed up. So we've got a government department. And what the department wants to be able to do is they want to be able to set a budget, but they want to know that when they issue a purchase order, that that budget, that that budget will start to reduce. So we'll start again with, say, $10 million. And what will happen is we'll issue uh, a purchase order. And that purchase order creates a commitment. And if we try to put in $11 million, in our purchase order, the system will stop us. It'll be overcommitted. So um, we call that commitment account. Okay. When you make a commitment, say we make this back in reality, it's nine million dollars. What will happen from that point forward is your available budget will only be one million dollars. When we get the actual invoice in, that invoice will be for nine million dollars but you still have $1 million of available budget. Say we try to put another purchase order in for $1.1 million, that'll give them a block. Now the way Century's been designed is you can block overcommitments, you can warn for overcommitments, or you can just give an order trail of it. Now that's, that's an implementation um, difference. The other big difference between um, the, way, uh, the, the way governments work is often there is a treasury or funding authority. And the funding authority has an agreement with the department as to what uh, the government department, as to how much and what kind of uh, expenditure there will be. Treasury wants to be able to know in its books, in its GL, how much is being spent in particular departments. It may have one, it may have very many departments. But the departments itself, they want to have a separate, a different side of, of GL account because they want to run, say, their payroll, they want to just break that up into the payrolls of their different divisions. What happens within Century is general ledger and also project costing actually keep track in the department's accounts that can automatically produce reports in the Treasury's books. Um, commitment Accounting 101, I think that's it. The, only, the, the other last thing, particularly in the century, is we can also simultaneously handle accrual accounting, commitment accounting, and cash accounting. That's in 102, which we'll do next time. Thanks.